Here's the first slide of this food freak show. Her name is Sylvia Escott Stump. She's the president of the American Dietetics Association. And they changed the name to something else now. It's not the ADA anymore. But she's wearing a red dress and she's holding a can of Coke. This is in November of 2011 at the National Convention for the Dietitians. And in the background it says Diet Coke. <clears throat> and then it says something about the dress collection. This says the heart truth. So they combined a nonprofit plus Coca-Cola plus the designer of the dress. And they're promoting all of it. But this just shows you that the food manufacturers own the American Dietetics Association. And at the ADA conventions and seminars, these food manufacturers teach the dietitians how to teach pa or what to say to patients, what, what they should sh say to patients. So also at this seminar or at this convention, Pepsi was there, Frito-Lay was there. These are pictures, November 2011. ConAgra was there. This is Healthy Choice frozen TV dinners with GMOs and chemicals added to it. Um, high fructose corn syrup had a booth. It says nutritionally equivalent to sugar, which is false. It says FDA approved, which is true. Meets FDA natural definition, which is true. Versatile sweetener made from corn, true. Okay, so the best lie is mostly truth. And they sneak in that one that's completely false. And don't forget the mercury that's added, not added to it, but 50% of high fru fructose corn syrup has uh, poisonous mercury in it. And, it's, and then, of course, the corn is genetically modified to begin with. All right, another picture shows Coca-Cola was there and General Mills was there. Now, this says right here, moderation made easy. So I hear my patient, my new patients tell me, well, I'm allowed to drink a little bit of Coke or I'm allowed to eat a little bit of cookies every day. And that's what the food manufacturers want them to think and to do. They want them to have a little bit of junk food. Moderation is okay. No, that's BS. If you're eating junk food, you're going to get sick. You're only going to get this sick if you have this much. If you have more, you're going to get more sick. So eliminate it totally so you don't get sick. So when you ever hear moderation, forget that. Okay, Sweet and Low was there. And uh, this is a separate picture that I have, but basically um, this slide is up to show so that I can tell you what the definition of food is. Food is that which is eaten that does three things. Number one, provide energy. Number two, sustain life. And number three, repair tissue. So food has to do all three of those things. These items don't do that. This is not food right here. This is to remind me to tell you that I have a lot of patients in the last 13 years that, that I've been in Ann Arbor that have spent a week in France or eight days in Iceland or they went to Egypt for a while and they lose weight, their allergies go away, their depression goes away, their fatigue goes away and it's not because they walk more, it's not because they're on vacation mode, it's because the food does not have a bunch of poisonous chemicals added to it like what we do in our, in our, uh, in our culture and I'm, I'm going to get into that later but first I'm going to talk about this so this equation says quantity plus quality equals vitality. Quantity is first, and this is more important than the quality of the food. So when we have people reduce the quantity of carbohydrates, reduce the quantity of sugar, the quality of the food goes up, and then they become more vital, their health comes back, they feel better. So let's talk about quantity, then later we'll talk about quality. So this is a graph showing the pre um, how many people are obese, as a percentage of the population. Beginning in 1980, that's when the first dietary guidelines were um, put out by the USDA. That's the food pyramid, telling us to eat more grains and basically eat more junk, more food. Uh, I mean, grains like white bread, white pasta, some whole grains and stuff, but the grains are too high in carbohydrates. So in 1980, that went up like that. So we're talking about quantity of carbohydrates is too high. Here's the consumption of sugar beginning all the way back from 1700 to 2000. You can see sugar consumption going up like this. There's World War I, there's World War II, and then we had high fructose corn syrup appear right here. And this is um, obesity prevalence right there. So sugar consumption goes up like that, and then obesity goes up like that.
Okay, here's another graph. It's similar, but this has to do with end-stage renal disease, people who die from kidney failure. You can see that um, people die from kidney fa failure like this from 1980 to 2005. And this is the consumption of high fructose corn syrup, and this is the consumption of sugar overall. So high fructose corn syrup is extremely deadly. All right, here's a very recent graph. I pulled this um, from the, a government website from 2000 to 2009, the prevalence of heart, of heart disease. So there's more people getting heart disease than ever before. It's coming up like this. See that? This was very difficult to find online. It took me a long time to find this. When you search out, you know, something about heart disease graph or something like that, it always shows mortality rates that have actually declined from heart disease. So less people are dying from heart disease, but the drugs prop up the sick person and keep them going and they end up dying from something else, but they're never cured of heart disease. So my grandfather had his first stroke in the late 1950s and he died in 2001 from gangrene. But during the whole time, he was never cured. He had heart disease the whole time. He had multiple surgeries. He was on 17 medications. It was a total mess. And if I was his doctor in the late 50s, I would have told him, you got to stop eating candy. And he ate candy and desserts after dinner all the time. That was his problem. Will a subprime mortgage help the heart disease? Mm, probably not. It dipped at that time. Pro maybe. Did you see it? Yeah. 2007, 2008, went down. Well, I don't know. I can't tell you about that. It was on your graph. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me keep going because this, this is on film here. All right. So this just shows from 1960 through 2 to 1996, the consumption of various types of fat has stayed the same. So if we're getting ob more obese, more diabetes, more heart disease, it's not because of fat. It's historical fact that it's not because of fat. So when somebody tells you to eat a low-fat diet, they don't know this. They, they go off some six-year study or some, you know, Harvard, whatever. I'm not going to get into that whole thing, but... All right, so here we go. This is total consumption of protein, total consumption of fat, total consumption of carbohydrates. See, the carbohydrates are going up. Um, grams per day. This is 400 grams of carbohydrates per day. That is unbelievably high. The average person should be anywhere from, let's say, oh, let's say 70 to 150. And it depends on you. Everybody's body's different. I have some people at 150. I have some people less than 70. But that's where their body needs it to be. And if you're at 400 or 500, like this in 1996, you're guaranteed to get sick diabetes, heart disease, something like that. Okay, and I just want to throw in, we're not sick because of smoking. We're, we're smoking less, and it's not because of alcohol. We're drinking less alcohol. Okay, it's sugar, bread, pasta, it's the carbohydrates. So as we eat these excessive amounts of carbohydrates, we get sicker and sicker, and then we run to a medical doctor, and what is the doctor's job? The doctor's job is to cut you surgically remove organs, or drug you with chemicals. And what that does is it props you up as you get sicker and sicker and sicker. And I've told this to patients, and some of them are very upset because they love, sorry, they love their doctor. And, you know, most doctors are pretty cool. You go bowling with them, and they're fun, and they're really, really smart. But that's, their job is not to improve your health. Their job is to do surgery and to give you drugs, okay? I know a lot of great doctors, but I'm not going to go to them for health care. <laughs> All right, this is going to go on YouTube. That sounds pretty radical, doesn't it? All right, the primary cause of disease is, isn't germs, it's not toxins, it's not stress, age, personality, or lack of exercise. The primary cause of disease is malnutrition. Yeah, cool, huh? So let me show you this guy. This is his second heart attack. I found this online. It's diet. Okay? Here, chronic pain, this symbolizes chronic pain. It's diet. Got that? What about this? It's his diet. It's not genetic. It's not environmental. It's not some mysterious, oh, let's just give you nebu 
inhalers. It's his diet. Cancer, you got to think diet. Also, there's some other factors, obviously, but um, there's uh, studies show 70% um, of cancers are preventable. Um, smoking and no sugar. So get rid of those two things. 70% of cancers are gone. All right, this is not genetic. This is diet. And you look at the girl and say, poor girl, her parents must be overweight, and chances are her parents are overweight. But it's the parents eat bad food and turn on the obese genes, and they pass that on to their kid. So yeah, you can get overweight because your parents are overweight, but still change the diet. All right, so that's enough about quantity. Now I'm going to talk about quality. So we're talking about the quality of the food. So the closer to Mother Nature, the better the food is. Um, and, the less, and, and then the more chemicals and man-made stuff put into our food, the worse off it is. So how many chemicals do we have in our food? Well, the FDA has approved 4,000 chemicals so far. And this is an incomplete list, and it says it on their website. So there's more than 4,000 chemicals that are added to our food. I'm going to give you one example. This is called Olacta. It's put in the dough, not in the bread. So when you read the ingredients of your cinnamon bun or something like that, it's not going to say Olacta in the ingredients because it's not put in the bread. It's put in the dough before the bread. So here's what Olacta does. It improves texture after microwaving, increases crumb softness, extends shelf life, flattens the tops and layer cakes, and dough strengthener. What? <laughs> My favorite is it improves texture after microwaving. What kind of magical chemical is this, and what the heck is it doing to your body? All right, so I'm moving on, just giving you some more chemicals. Here's MSG. These mice were fed the same exact diet. This one was fed MSG also, and that one was not. MSG makes people gain weight. There are 66 different names for MSG, and the website msgmyth.com, this is a page directly that I just copied. So you can see a word like, for example, um, if it says fermented proteins, you got to think MSG. If it says yeast extract, that's, you got to think MSG. Okay, so let's talk about more um, chemicals. These are, this is from Kellogg's. This one's sold in the United States. This one's sold in uh, the UK. The colorings are red number 40, yellow number 6, and blue number 1 for that one sold to your kids in America. And in Great Britain and UK, the color, the red is called beetroot red. That's a food. All right, and, and then annatto, which I think is yellow. And then paprika, which is, uh, I'm assuming, like that orange red color. So anyways, that's food right there. That's not a poisonous chemical made from uh, coal tar. That's where that comes from. All right. These products do not have any blueberries in them, okay? And it says blueberry, right? They got these blueberry sort of chunks. That's a really hard, high fructose corn syrup colored and flavored to, fl to be like blueberries. Just to let you know, there's no blueberries in these products. This says sugar in the raw. This is not raw sugar. It's white sugar colored. It's refined white sugar colored. This is not raw. It says it tastes raw. Okay, just don't be, mis don't be fooled. 75% of honey sold in grocery stores is not honey. It's high fructose corn syrup with a thickener and a flavoring and a color added to it. So you got to know the farmer. Or if you go to a good store like Whole Foods or something or Trader Joe's, you can trust them um, regarding uh, the honey and you ask questions. 59% of canned fish is incorrectly labeled. It's not the real fish. It's, it says tuna. Could it, Chances are it's not tuna. Just letting you know. All right. We're talking about quality of food here. Let's talk about the quality of salt. This is organic. Um, it says French gray sea salt. And it comes in a jar like that where you have to pinch the salt out. It's usually moist. As opposed to the table salt that's dry and it shakes out. This is dry and it shakes out because it has aluminum in it, which makes it flow. Okay, now this has all the minerals. How many minerals are there? 70, 80 minerals. I don't know, but it has all of them. And I, I pulled this from Wikipedia. Just look up salt in Wikipedia. It says they take a brine solution, which is salt water, 
a brine solution is treated with chemicals that precipitate most impurities. So it pulls out the impurities. And then you're left with table salt. Then they add um, aluminum to it. Okay, but just check this out though. Precipitate most impurities largely magnesium and calcium salts. Okay, so when is magnesium an impurity? It's not. It's an essential mineral. You have to have it or you die. When is calcium an impurity? It's not. Okay, so they're taking away all the food out of this, the food value, and you're left with this, which is garbage. So just do that. And I saw once on national television a debate between a person that represents this side and a person that represents this side. And they didn't even talk about the fact that this is good. They're just saying salt is good, salt is bad, no salt is good. And they're going back and forth. But, but they didn't say, well, good salt is good for you and bad salt is bad for you. They didn't say that part. All right, let's talk a little bit about sugar. This is sugar cane. They squeeze it, the juice comes out, and then they refine the, the juice and um, they sell it to Kellogg's in two different colors, clear or um, like a tan or like a light brown color. And then they spray that on the cereal. So if you have cornflakes and they don't care whether or not you think there's sugar on there, they'll spray the clear sugar on it and you can see the reflection of the sugar on the flake. As, as opposed to total, which is supposed to be the healthy one, which is what, post or something, they spray the brown sugar on that flake. So you look at it and it's not shiny and you can't see that there's sugar on it. So they're trying to trick you. All right, so just an uh, example of different types of sugars. I had a friend go to Iceland for eight days. She said they eat four foods there. They have fish, they have um, dairy from goats, and they have goat meat and sheep meat and candy. Those are the four things that they eat. They live on a rock with covered in ice. They don't grow food there, right? No tomatoes and stuff. She goes, and she goes, you cannot believe how much candy they eat, but nobody's overweight. That's because their candy is sweetened with beet sugar, which is a food. It's not refined. And beets, you know, they're sweet. So, all right, enough about sugar. Let's talk about fats. Here we have yellow oils in a clear bottle. These are bad. All of these are bad. It doesn't matter what the label says. Just ignore these and don't buy these and don't use them. Heart attack in a bottle right here. All right, coconut oil is healthy. Saturated fat is healthy for you. It's always been healthy. There were some mistakes made back in the 70s with some research and then the media picked up on it and said, oh, saturated fat is bad for you. It has always been healthy for us. All right, here's Crisco. This is um, hydrogenated fats, also known as trans fats. Okay, these are bad. It's margarine, it's Crisco. Just avoid this. Throw it away. Don't even finish the tub. You got to throw it away or give it to your worst enemy. All right. So it's uh, solid at room temperature, and that's why you have this formation right here. See how that sticks like that? It, it, it holds a shape. This Triscuit right here holds its shape because of the Crisco type of fat, the hydrogenated fat. That's how they use it. This is bread. It says zero grams of trans fat on the, on the top, but then when you read the ingredients, it says vegetable shortening, hydrogenated soybean oil, and partially hydrogenated soy and or cottonseed oil. Trans and hydrogenated is the same thing. And it is, it is legal for them to say no trans fats here, but then they have to say that it's down in here. They just, some sneaky lobbyist got that in there. So, and it's a federal law. It's just totally stupid. But notice here it says no lard, no cholesterol. And I have a whole 20 minute lecture on cholesterol and the arteries and stuff. This is very unfortunate because lard is healthy and cholesterol is healthy. And your great great grandparents ate lard and cholesterol and none of them had heart attacks. The heart attacks weren't until 1910, 1909, 1911, right around there heart attacks became uh, known. And that was exactly 20 years after Dr. Pepper, Coca-Cola, Tootsie Rolls, you know that junk food started to hit the market. So it took about 20 years to it takes about 20, 20 years to kill your heart with um, bad food. Okay, here's another example. Um, it's another bread. It says zero grams of trans fat here, 
And then on the ingredients, partially hydrogenated vegetable oil and then hydrogenated oils. So you got to look at the ingredients. This is where the magic's at right there. Okay, still talking about um, oils. Vegetable oils are unhealthy. And they put oil into these pops and they brominate it. I'm going to talk about bromine here in a second. And the, pu the purpose of brominated vegetable oil is to make it look like there's pulp in the pop. You know when you have orange juice, there's pulp in there. There's, it's, it looks a little thick in there, right? Well, they add that to this uh, um, cream soda, red pop, and Mountain Dew, and Gatorade to make it look like it has some substance. It's just a marketing ploy. But it's banned in over 100 countries. This is ho horrible, horrible for your body. Okay, so bromine, so I, I just, that's brominated vegetable oil. Okay, so let's move on into bromine. So since 1991, the FDA has urged bakers to voluntarily stop using it. Bromine is a flame, re flame retardant. It pushes iodine out of the body. It causes tremendous harm. And it's my opinion that this is the worst thing about bread is bromine. And people are all caught up on gluten and refined and all this stuff about how bad bread is. And I agree. But bromine is totally overlooked. So you have to have, it says banned in several countries including China. Bromine is banned in China. So you have to look at the ingredients of your bread and it has to say unbromated. And I know of uh, three companies that have unbromated bread. Pepperidge Farms, Ezekiel Bread, and then locally, Zingerman's. Those are the only three that I know of. So there should be iodine in the bread, and iodine was used for decades. And then the drug company started to attack iodine in 1962. And there's a whole story behind that. I gotta do another YouTube video on that. All right. So, but anyways, iodine was taken out and bromine was put in. All right. Um, so now, these are changing subjects. We're bouncing around here, but so here's salad dressings, and these are made out of soy oil, soybean oil and canola oil. So you read the ingredients, and that's what, that's what that says. So this graph here shows the production of soy oil be it began really after World War II. So soy oil was not in our diet even 75 years ago. It's not a food. Soy oil should not be consumed. Now, if our... If our ancestors from 3,000 years ago ate soy oil, then our DNA would accept it. But our DNA has not changed. It has not evolved enough since 1940 to accept soy oil. Same thing with canola oil. It says canola oil was granted approval for use, use in the U.S. food market in 1985. That's how new canola oil is, 1985. It is not a food. It should not be consumed. So instead of using those salad dressings, I'm plugging olive oil and vinaigrette. Just use plain old olive oil. And there's a million different flavors of these two things. So you don't be bored with this. Get different kinds of flavors. Okay, here's a little slide on fructose. Um, it's the same fructose here as it is in here. Fructose is fructose. All right, now if it comes from corn, um, the, the problem with that is that other chemicals or other ingredients are mixed in with it, okay? But the point of this is that fructose is the sugar that Mother Nature made for us to gain weight super fast. This is the sugar that makes us gain weight fast. So um, let me give you a little history on us as humans walking on this planet. So um, we've been on this, if you believe in evolution, we've been on this planet for um, 2 million years. And agriculture is only 10,000 years old. So for 1.99 million years, we ate a hunter-gatherer diet. All right. So we had um, we hunted in the winter time, and then in the early spring, the animals would eat green grass, and they got plump. And then we would eat that, eat, eat them, and then food. Then like other plants would grow during the summertime, and then fruit was ready in the late summer and fall, like apples and stuff. Now fruit was really sweet. Our ancestors ate a lot of it. It made them gain weight, and it slowed their brains down for the long winter ahead. That's what fructose does. It makes you gain weight, and it slows your brain down for the long winter ahead. So if you want to be overweight and dumb, eat a lot of fructose. That's the bottom line with that. All right. 
Um, so here's um, a picture of healthy, happy cows. These are the cows that you want to eat. They're grass-fed, organic, no hormones, no antibiotics added. These cows are not healthy. Simple enough. Okay. Same thing with these chickens. These are happy chickens. Eat them. Know your farmer or go to a good grocery store that has uh, good products. And you're going to pay a little more. But um, pay, pay for good food and supplements now instead of paying for insurmountable medical expenses later. And then so there's the bad um, unhealthy chickens. Same thing with the pigs. Okay, so moving on. Uh, GMOs, this is one of my last subjects for the night. I put Darth Vader here. What would Vader do? So in this, in the, if he was here on this planet right now, he would create a Death Star and he would start obliterating planets around the universe. But we don't, we don't have the wherewithal or technology to do that right now. So instead, how about this? How about change Mother Nature? Let's change the plants so that the plants are not affected when you spray a poison on them. They soak up that poison. Now the poison is more, in, I'm sorry, it's less and less effective as the years go on. So the farmers have to spray it more and more and more. So now the plants drink it up, you eat the plant. Now you're eating that pesticide. You're eating Roundup. The poison kills your good bacteria in your gut. It stops the detoxification processes of your cells. It decreases nutritional supply to your body and causes dozens of diseases. The more sprayed, the less effective it is. GM corn has 200 times more formaldehyde than what has been determined to be toxic in animal studies. 200 times. And it is not banned. <laughs> it is also has 18 times the safe level of Roundup, which is glyphosate, determined by the EPA. The EPA says you can have this much in your body of glyphosate, but GM corn has this much in it, and we're eating it, and what? We're eating it, so we got to stop doing this. Here's the top 10 genetically modified foods. Corn's number one, soy, cottonseed, papaya, rice, canola, potatoes, tomatoes, dairy products, and peas. Over 70% of supermarket foods are genetically modified or have some, you know, one of these 10 in them. Now, the only thing that you can be safe with is organic. If you see this, you're good. It's safe, and it's, it's been studied over and over again and researched, and, and third parties have looked into it, and or, USDA Organic is good. So when you go to the store, it's a matter of finding the location of where that is. It's geography. So I say to patients, okay, I need you to eat organic food, or I need you to eat more produce. And they start looking like, okay, well, what, what's that mean? And they're, they're lost. And then I tell them, you got to go in the aisles around the outside of the store. Don't go in the middle aisles because the produce is immediately to your right or maybe immediately to, to your left. So it's geography. You got to think geography. And instead of going to the bad grocery stores, now you got to go to the good ones. That means you have to drive to a different location. And the parking lot has different like parking spaces than the other place. So it's all about geography. The store, the parking lot, where in the store, the aisles. And then when you're, when you're at the aisle, Here's the carrots, here's the celery, just got to know where it is. So think geography. Okay, and that includes farmer, farmer's markets. This is the only recipe book that we sell in the office. It's Nourishing Traditions. And um, so that's the one that we recommend. Here's some good websites. There's tons of good information. There's way more now than even five years ago on the subject. Eatwild.com has, you can go to that, click on your state, click on your city. It has uh, farmer's markets, healthy food, uh, grocery stores, etc., etc. What's on my food.org talks about the poisons that are put in the food, and then like grapes and apples will absorb it. And the and the government, our government chops up these apples and says, oh, there's um, an average of 52 chemicals in apples, and it has it listed all these chemicals. Okay, a 52 I just add, I just made up, but I did see some foods had 52, others had 37, others had 26. Some of them had zero. And then foodbabe.com, I found her on Facebook, and she's um, very active on uh, educating on good food, and I'm a fan of hers. Our favorite supplement company is called Standard Process. They have whole food supplements. So what they do, they have a uh, mineral product that's a little bottle of 90 tablets. They grow it themselves organically, and they start with 30 pounds of produce, 
and they take out the water and the fiber and you're left with all the nutrients, known and unknown. So we've only been discovering nutrients for the last 200 years, especially in the last 100 years. So what, how many more nutrients will we find in the next you know, 200 years? Well, it's already in their product. You don't have to you know, go searching for it. It's already in there.